I, I really try to surround myself with great people and they try to make me think differently and make you maybe change my mindset sometimes, which really helps me see a different perspective compared to just, you know, the tunnel vision I may have at that time. This is the Entrepreneur Way with Neil Ball. Unlocking the secrets of successful entrepreneurs seven days a week. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Twitter at Neil D. Ball. Napoleon Hill said the power of the mastermind is the driving force. To discover how you can unlock the potential in your business using the power of a mastermind, go to mastermindunlimited.com. And now, here is your host, Neil Ball. Hello, it's Neil Ball. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Entrepreneur Way. The Entrepreneur Way is about the entrepreneur's journey, the vision, the mindset, the commitment, the sacrifice, failures and successes. I'm so excited to bring you our special guest today, Michael Oberdick. But before I introduce you to him, I have a quote from Tony Robbins for you. He says successful people ask better questions and as a result, they get better answers. The Entrepreneur Way asks the questions so we all get the insight, inspiration and ideas to apply in our businesses. Michael, welcome to the show. Are you ready to share your version of the Entrepreneur Way with us? Yes, I am. Michael Oberdick is an entrepreneur, a fitness junkie, an Apple enthusiast who just over two years ago lost his job and his grandfather and a relationship. And then he was let go by Verizon Wireless. After being kicked around by life, he decided to take a second run at owning a business. He started a business selling and repairing Apple devices. That was two years ago. He now operates two retail storefronts and a large e-commerce business called Apple Outlet. Michael, can you provide us with some more insight into your business and personal life to allow us to get to know more about what you do and who you are? Yes, definitely. So my name is Michael and I own a business called Apple Outlet. Mm -hmm. We deal in pre-owned Apple to repair. Uh, Before I got into this, I specialized in uh, wireless with cellular carriers where I spent seven years in that industry. Um, A portion of that was spent owning my own franchise. That was a good learning lesson in in being an entrepreneur. (laughs) Um, My career there was cut short uh, when my position was ended. Um, and personally, I went through a, uh, an interesting time after that, after I lost my grandfather, lost my job and, uh, a relationship came to an end. Um, so that all happened right before I launched my new business, which is Apple outlet. And that kind of has, uh, laid the foundation for who I am. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what do you enjoy most about what you do, Michael? I enjoy most uh, is providing uh, solutions that are financially cost effective uh, for consumers basically to be able to get Apple devices and repairs done uh, that they didn't think they could get done because of the cost. And what is it that drives you? Um, Providing good services and just building a brand. um, And and like I said, once again, bringing solutions to the area that people didn't think that they could possibly get. And how do you relax when you're not working in your business? Well, like in my bio, I said uh, I'm a fitness junkie. I wouldn't call myself an expert. Uh, I think I am, but I'm not. Um, So I enjoy uh, weight training and just fitness-related activities. And do you have any entrepreneurial role models? Uh, My main role model would be my father, who's an entrepreneur and owns a business. But I also follow uh, Gary Vaynerchuk and Grant Cardone very heavily. Yeah. Have you read Grant's books as well? Yeah, and, and Gary's. They both got books. Um, yeah, I've read a lot of Gary's books, and I've read uh, I've read one of Grant's, and I'm on the 10x rule right now. Oh yeah, so that's the goal, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, can we just talk about the time before you were an entrepreneur? Yeah. Yeah. What difficulties did you have to overcome to start when you started your business? Um. Well, I had personal issues at the time, which was the main battle, but the other time was trying to decide if um, running an online business or a retail location was a better decision, and I ended up doing both. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you use online to drive people into your into your retail premises. Is that what you do? Right. We were originally formed out of my bedroom focusing on online sales, so I didn't have to have a, a retail storefront. Um but when I outgrew that, I decided to get a retail storefront and do online sales at the same time. Okay, that's great. 
And did you have any doubts that s- delayed you starting your business? Oh, yes. Multiple times I didn't know if it was going to make it or not. Yeah. <laughs> um, there, there was a lot of times where I didn't know if uh, the things I was doing or the way I was going about it was correct because there was, there was no foundation or game plan laid for me that said this is how you're supposed to be successful. Uh-huh. And what mistakes did you make that slowed your journey? Um, I, uh, oh man, where do I start? (laughs) Uh, there's lots of those. I still learn lessons every single day. Um, the biggest mistakes I I guess I made were, um, maybe getting a tad, uh, quick on the trigger on, uh, moving into retail locations. I wish I may have stayed in, uh, online a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess, uh, just learning how to buy inventory correctly was my biggest mistakes that I made was I, uh, I had to learn by, spending too much money sometimes that uh that wasn't the correct inventory and parts to buy mm-hmm. and what are some of the things that you did before you started your business that would be helpful tips to some of the listeners who haven't yet taken their first step on the entrepreneur way uh well be able to accept failure because that's going to probably come on a daily basis for you <laughs> mm-hmm. you just have to decide which failures are big ones and which ones are little ones um I mean, the biggest thing about being an entrepreneur, in my opinion, is just the uh, the mental the mental portion of it. Is it can you take you know the mental issues and constraints and pressure it's going to put on yourself? Um, so you, you need to be able to be prepared for that. And uh, the biggest way to do that is just by reaching out to other entrepreneurs or listening to your podcast or looking at YouTube videos of entrepreneurs and trying to understand if that's something that you could really you know deal with on a daily basis. Mm. And now, can we just talk a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey now and some of the things that about that? So can you talk, can you let us know what your opinions are on whether culture is important from the beginning in a business? I think that culture is, is the biggest portion of your business, period. Um, I've always been a firm believer in that. And I mean, the culture is, can be constrained in different ways or, uh, you know, told in different ways. But uh, especially if you have employees, the culture of your business has to be, you know, absolutely great. Mm -hmm. Um, But also portrayed to your customers, you have to have a great culture and provide them with, you know, something that's comfortable and something that they like, you know, the service and products that you bring to them has to be excellent. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you could have the greatest products and services in the world. And if your, your business, your place of business or your culture of your business isn't good, uh, they may not feel comfortable spending their hard earned money, you know, with your business. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how, how have you actually set up the culture in your business? Uh, well, our motto is everyone gets treated like family, and that's yeah. what's hard to find in the technology industry. Is you know, it, it's hard to get uh, somebody that will actually sit down and help you understand the technology that you're buying. Um, so we do things on a monthly basis. We have free free training sessions. We have one on one training sessions. We have a uh, retired school teacher who actually works for us who does training sessions to help people understand the products that they're buying or the products that they already have Mm -hmm. um and that's one of the main things is you know we just we try to set that comfort level of we're not just going to sell you something and let you walk out the door and not how to know how to use it that's a great touch actually been doing that so when someone buys a product from you you then give them training on how to use the product that they bought Yes, definitely. Or they yeah. can just come come into our store on a daily basis, or call us and ask for advice, and we're gonna you know we're gonna help them. That's fun. That's that's absolutely awesome doing that. Knowing what you know now, is there anything that if you'd known it when you started out would have helped you to shortcut the learning curve? Oh, I, I, tons of things. <laughs> <laughs> is there um, anything that stands out in your mind? Um, I mean. There's so many things that would have helped me, you know, get the learning curve down that I don't even think I could give you one. But if if I would have known those things ahead of time, I wouldn't have learned the lessons that I've learned. So I might not be sitting in the same spot that I'm sitting in right now. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a double-edged sword there. <laughs> okay. And how much does gut feeling influence your decisions in your business? Um, I tend to always go with my gut. I, if there's a decision going on, I always get that decision on paper as soon as it comes out of my mind. And then I sit down and think about it, um, to, to kind of, you know, elaborate a little bit more, but it usually is, you know, you, your gut's usually right. <laughs> mm. You know, life is made of constant change, whether we like it or not. And many people say that the only constant in life is change. Michael, how do you try to keep up with change? Just try to learn along with it, and you know, uh, try to limit my fails, <laughs> mm-hmm. limit the limit the times that we do make mistakes. And I mean, change is going to cause mistakes. 
uh, you just got to keep up with it. You know, once again, it goes back to that emotional and attitude thing. As long as you've got a good head on your shoulders and understand the big picture, um, you can deal with anything. Mm -hmm. And what is your favorite book on entrepreneurialism, business, personal development, leadership, or motivation? And can you tell us why you have chosen it? Um, man, that's a, that's a good one. Hmm. Um, I think I, I mean, this one's a little more marketing based, but, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk's, uh, jab, 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 right hook is one of my favorites. And that just kind of, it kind of breaks down your mindset as an entrepreneur, how you have to look at marketing, um, and understand it. And that's probably my favorite one. Okay. And how do you, so that's obviously a marketing book. How do you use some of the stuff in there? Do you actually apply it in your business? Well, I actually apply it to my business and in, in my personal life, not just in marketing. I, you know, I have to understand that on a daily basis, there's some days I got to throw jabs and, you know, yeah. that's most of the time. And some days you have to throw right hooks um, and mm -hmm. it just comes down to a daily basis. So I don't just correlate that to marketing. I, I correlate that to my, you know, how I deal with my team, how I deal with customers, how I deal with, with everything is um, some days you're going to win and some days you're going to lose and some days you're going to win really hard and some days you're going to lose really hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just have to keep going. Mm -hmm. Everyone, when you have a busy life, listening to audiobooks is a great way to expand your knowledge in the time that you may be doing other things, such as driving or when you are at the gym. We have a special offer for you of a free audiobook of your choosing. To choose your free audiobook, go to www.freeaudiobookoffer.com. As long as you haven't already signed up, then you will qualify. Michael, what I'd like to do now is just talk about the future and speculate about a few things here. What one thing would you do with your business if you knew that you couldn't fail? Continue to expand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, 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 that's an easy one. <laughs> I, if I knew I wasn't going to fail, I would, you know, I would expand to the biggest level I could get to. Okay. And what skill, if you were excellent at it, would help you the most to double your business? Hmm. Um, man, I guess, uh, understanding what is important. Sometimes I, I have to align my days and my mindset and my business around what's important. And I sometimes don't always do that the best. Mm -hmm. In five years from now, if a well-known business publication was publishing an article on your business after talking to your customers and suppliers, what would you like it to say? That Michael and his business truly cares about the customers and the well-being of themselves, their devices, and their financial stability. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that. Um, we're now at the part of the show where you share three golden nuggets with us. So, Michael, what is your favorite quote and how have you applied it? Um, hmm. My favorite quote is probably, whatever you do in life, surround yourself with smart people who argue with you. And it's by John Wooden. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that that's, you know, I, I really try to surround myself with great people and they try to make me think differently and make you maybe change my mindset sometimes, which really helps me see a different perspective compared to just, you know, the tunnel vision I may have at that time. Mm -hmm. And do you have any favorite online resources that you could share with us? Uh, I use Udemy, uh, Udemy online classes for lots of things. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what is your best advice to other entrepreneurs? If you do good business, business will do good to you. Okay, that's a a nice philosophy. Uh, if, you, if if you do if you do the right thing day in and day out, your business will at some point come for full circle, hopefully for you, and do good things for you. Mm -hmm. Kind of a kind of a karma yeah. effect. Yeah. Everyone, if you didn't manage to get a note of Michael's favorite resource or his favorite books, then you can find the links on Michael's show notes page. Just go to the entrepreneurway.com and search for Michael or Michael Oberdick in the search box. Michael, is there anything else that you'd like to add about your business? Not that I can think of. Okay. It's been an honor having you on the show, Michael. Thank you for sharing your insights and your wisdom about being an entrepreneur. And thank you. Thank you, Neil.
You're welcome. Thank you for listening to The Entrepreneur Way. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Twitter at Neil D. Ball.